Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. If you saw my Facebook Live this week, you will have seen me make this card. And it's a card using the Fond of Autumn stamp set. It does have matching dies, but for this card I didn't use the dies. And it's part of this class, the Fond of Autumn class, on Friday, September the 23rd. I need to order for this class by tomorrow, which is Sunday the 10th. If you would like space in this class, you get the stamp set and um, the PDF and supplies for three cards. And this is actually one of the cards. So I would send you the supplies and everything. Just let me know that you'd like a space and I can add you to the class. The Zoom video is on Friday, September the 23rd at 6pm. If you can't make that, there is a PDF. So you would see how to make it and how to put the cards together. But let's move this out of the way. This card is a really quick and easy layout, but looks really pretty. And I'm going to show you a stepped up version. So I'm going to show you how this card can just have a couple of extra elements just to make it pop a little bit more. Now I'm using the largest stamp out of the stamp set which is this gorgeous floral piece with the acorns and the berries um, but actually you don't have to keep it as one stamp you can cut once you've inked it up and stamped with it you can cut the elements into sort of four pieces and have the flowers the acorns with the oak leaves and the two little sets with the berries or you can leave it just as one stamp to color in but I'm using it and cutting it. So what I'm doing is I'm going to stamp with early espresso. Just because my card is going to be browns and oranges, I wanted to stamp in brown. Now, it's a really big stamp. So you need to, rather than sort of try, let me just show you, rather than try and do this all the way over, you need to really use the ink pad and go over it this way. It's much quicker and much easier. And you can actually see how much ink you've got on the on the stamp itself, doing it this way too. And then I'm just stamping onto a piece of the thinner basic white card, not the thick that we use for card bases, just the thinner piece. Okay, and it stamps beautifully. You just close that up. Okay. Now, if you did watch my Facebook Live, you will have seen that I showed how to fussy cut these pieces because if you don't have the dies, that's the easiest way to do it and it, it really fussy cuts easily. You just cut sort of between the main lines and you get four different images. But there is a set of dies that match and you can purchase the dies as well. If you wanted to add $40 to the class, then you can get the dies. And the die that you need to use is this one. And you can see that it's going to cut into different elements. So you can color all of the pieces and then add the die. Oops, let's turn it round. And then pop it through your cut and emboss machine like this. And what you will then get is the pieces, I'm just going to try and put them the right way around. So it will look like this. And then this one would have come from here. And the two smaller pieces, they would fit into these shapes here. Now I like to cut all these pieces out. Uh, let me just see how that goes. Oh, there it is. I like to cut them out and then to color them because I don't always want to colour the whole of the image. I might not want all of the pieces. For this card, I just used the flowers and the two sets of berries. And that's what I'm going to do again. Um, I'm going to use just part of it. I'm going to use the two sets of berries, but I'm going to use the acorn piece. And rather than have to do lots of colouring and feel like I've got to colour the whole sheet in, I'm just cutting the pieces and colouring the pieces that I need. I already have coloured and cut 
the little berry pieces, but I'll show you what I did with those. I used the um, Evening Evergreen blends and I used the dark Evening Evergreen blend and just coloured the leaves with these. Now I'm actually going to change it over and use the little bullet nib just because they're quite small leaves and I don't really want to go over the edges. So I'm just going to colour with this. And it's a really quick and easy one to colour. For the berries, let's move that over. For the berries, I used Cajun Craze. And I coloured the whole of the berry with the light Cajun Craze first. I just went round in a little circle. I didn't do anything fancy. Just like that. And then to make it pop, I used the dark one and just did a little circle at the base of the berry, sort of where it would be attached to the stem. And as it dries, you can see, oh, let's put that lid on. You can see it gives it just a little 3D look. Okay, so that's just how I coloured the those two little pieces. And then for the oak one, let's move those pens. I've got some different colours as well. For the acorns themselves, I used the bronze blender. Let me see, that's the bronze one. And I coloured like, the nut part of the acorn in the bronze. But you could use watercolour crayons, you could use markers, you could use um, a blender pen and an ink pad. Lots of different ways to colour. I just wanted to have to different browns for the acorn. And then for the little cap, I used, what's this one? Dark soft suede. And it just gives a slightly different look. And you really don't have to spend a lot of time coloring. Sometimes when I'm using these pens, I leave parts white or I won't colour right up to the edges and that just makes it look you know, not like it's um, a picture where everyone's the same just gives a little bit of depth and definition okay that's my little acorns done and then to colour the leaves I'm only using soft succulent and I'm using those colours the soft succulent because that's the colour on the designer series paper. And I wanted it to pull that colour in. So what have I got here? The light one. And it's quite a big leaf, so you can you know, colour over quite quickly. It sounds a bit scratchy, doesn't it? And then you can either use the darker one and go over the lines on the stamps to give a little bit more definition, like this. And then go back over it with your light one just to blend that all in. And again, you don't have to be too precise. You can either do it like that or some people prefer just to use the light one so that when you've got it coloured, let's just colour this one. Then you let it dry a little bit and then just go over where that shading is going to be again. And you get a similar effect. It's not quite as dark as using the dark and the light pen, but you do get a variation in colour. So I'm just going to colour this one again, the last of these leaves. And there is another set of leaves on this image but I'm going to use a different colour. Okay, I'm going to go over a few lines with the dark one. You don't have to be too precise. I'm just going over those lines again, just to blend them in a little bit more. There we go. And then these two little leaves here, I'm actually going to use the Evening Evergreen Light 
just so that it sort of blends in with this leaf that I've done as well. But you could do it in a brown, you could use one of your other greens, whatever works for you. There we go. Okay. And let's pop those all to one side and add them in. And while those are drying, we're going to do the base for the card and um, get that sort of put together. So I've got my trimmer here and I've got a piece of the designer series paper. Now this is cut up three and three quarters by five and I'm going to make a little mark on it. At this right hand side, I'm going to go down an inch. So I'm actually just going to pop it into my trimmer to do the measuring. So just at an inch and then I'm going to do one at the bottom left at an inch as well. Now you can make this mark wherever you want if you want it to be at three quarters of an inch or an inch and a quarter or just eyeball it that's fine as well. Pop the little two marks into the cutting groove and then I'm just going to cut and this gives you pieces for two cards and when you pop them round you can see they're exactly the same because I've chosen something that's non-directional. If you're choosing a directional paper then you can, you can use the back or your image might be upside down if you have it at the top left but you can use it at the bottom right instead and still create this card but your designer series paper would be here and your plainer piece of Cajun Craze card would be showing up here. Okay. I'm going to keep this one and I've got a basic white card base. This time it's cut at five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. And a piece of basic Cajun Craze and this is cut at four by five and a quarter and that's going to be our base exactly the same as we did here but I wanted to step it up just a little bit so I used the um, fall embossing folder that's in the January no not the January the um, July to December catalogue so you can see that it has a plainer piece at this side and all I did was I lined it up. I know that when I put this on my card, the bottom here is going to be covered by my designer series paper. I'm, I'm going to make this landscape card and it's going to be covered. So there was no point worrying about whether I could get any leaves over here because it's going to be covered up anyway. So all I did was I put it into the folder. And let me see. You can see here's the plain piece and here's the plain piece here. And I just moved it along that line at the bottom until I liked where the leaves fell. You can move it right over to this side so that you have a smaller blank piece. Or you could move it over to the right a little bit more and have more of a blank piece. Just wherever your eye is drawn to. So this is going to go on here. But actually I'm going to have the leaves at the top right. And then my design series paper is going to go here. But I want a little demarcation line like I had on this one. And this was just a scrap of designer series paper. It's the same paper as this, but just turned over. So to attach that, you could use liquid glue. I like to put it on with my um, tear and tape. And I'm going to put tear and tape across that diagonal right onto the edge. It would look nice with maybe a little piece of um, gold metallic card if you didn't have a, a designer series paper that you wanted to put on. But I just used the back because I know that all the colours will match then and uh, you know it will it will look like it matches and it goes together. Okay. So decide how much of that paper you want to be seen. You can start with just a tiny bit. I'm going for about a quarter of an inch. 
and I'm just going to put the paper down and then trim these edges. And I'm going to follow the line of the designer series paper and just snip all the way across so that it looks like it's you know it's meant to go together there. And then I'm going to do the same over here. And this is a really easy way to add just a, a little extra depth to your paper. Okay. Now, I'm going to attach this here. And then can you see how just that little mark or that little line of paper between my designer series paper and my embossing folder really makes both of them pop up. So I'm just going to attach this. And I'm using my stamping seal, but you could use a liquid glue. You could use you know, your tape runner. You could use your tear and tape. And when you pop it on, make sure you've got the same border on the left and on the bottom and on the top. It's just that little, little border. Okay. And I'm all ready to attach this to my base as well. That's pretty, isn't it? On the back where it's debossed. That looks really pretty. You could use it that way too. Oops. And then this will just fit with that nice little border all the way through. And because when you cut this designer series paper, you get enough for two cards, you could actually make one of each. You could make one go in portrait and one go in landscape and the, the paper would still work. Now, I have cut out with a punch a two and a quarter inch circle. If you don't have these punches that Stampin' Up! used to sell, you could use the stylish shapes um, or your layering circles. That would work just as well. And I'm going to be having my sentiment here with my acorns across here like this. So I know that I've got this space here to stamp in. And again, I'm going to use one of the stamps from this set. I'd use the thank you. Um, you could use the just a note, the I'm so fond of you would fit. I don't think the autumn wishes would. I think it's a little bit too long. But I'm going to go with the thank you again, I think. And it's already on my stamp block, so let's use that one and I'm going to do it sort of to the top and the right because it's a circle it doesn't matter too much whether I've got it exactly straight because you can just move your circle around but I know I want it at the top right okay and then this one I'm going to attach using dimensionals Let's see. I want it to be over both of the elements, so over the designer series paper and a little bit over the embossed card. I'm going to pop it central, but I'm not going to stick it down yet. So I just want to double check that I've got enough room for my oak leaves. I want them to just turn around a little bit like that. That would work. Okay. Now my oak leaves. This part of it, I can use liquid glue to attach here, but the left hand side, I need to put dimensionals on because this piece is already raised and I don't want this to sort of squash down. So I'm going to put a dimensional here and a dimensional here. And that will just raise it up as much as I need. And I'm going to put just a little bit of liquid glue around here, or you could use your tape runner. Let me just see where it fits. So these two leaves. Oh, my liquid glue doesn't want to come out. Okay, so we'll use use a little bit of the stamping seal instead. There we go. And take these backings off. We are going to put the other little leaves in as well, but it's easier to put your main one on and then to add the little um, extra pieces. 
So that's now, it's not going to get squashed because it's got those dimensionals there, keeping it to the same height as our sentiment. And let's see where we're going to pop these. Might just have them so that they go underneath the uh, the acorns. Oh, I quite like that. It goes right to the edge of the card, but I do actually like it just sort of crossing over there. So that's where I'm going to put it. It's just on the edge there, and it just takes your eye down the whole card there. And I'm going to pop this one up here. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to have this one going on flat. But if you wanted to raise it up and pop a little dimensional under, you could do that too. Let me just see. Hmm, actually, let's... I'm going to put a dimensional behind it. I like it covering just a little bit more of that designer series paper. There we go. And then last of all, I'm going to put some of the little rustic metallic adhesive dots on. And I think I'm going to have one down here. Oops. And then I'm going to put one of the medium sized ones or the larger ones. Let's see. I think I might have them over this side this time. Now, I'm just going to move that one down a little bit into that nice clear space so that you can see it easily. And I do have a little white twine bow left from Tuesday. So I'm going to pop that on as well. Let me see. Hmm, actually, I might, I might not even need it over there. I might pop it over here instead. So I'll get a little glue dot and stick the knot onto the glue dot and then roll up, roll it up a little bit so that it's all covered over with the, the twine. There we are. And let's get some ribbon scissors just to cut the length of those tails. There we go. So I think that's really pretty. I might even uh, make another whole set of those and put them in, maybe in one of the little um, craft boxes that we sell. So I think that would be a really pretty little set of cards for Thanksgiving. So here's the card again that we made on Tuesday and then stepped up just a little bit by having the embossing on here and uh, it just makes it look just that little bit prettier, doesn't it? So thank you everybody for joining me. I hope you like this card and I hope you'll give it a go. I really do appreciate your support every week on YouTube. Thank you so much. Take care everyone and have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye.